Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. As you all know, I just got the brand new Twinny Needle, the 2002 Marquee. Of course, I showed you guys the unboxing, but we're about to set it up. So the one thing I want to explain to you guys when you do purchase, if you do consider getting any multi-head, you will have the pleasure of having a live training. So now I already know the embroidered machine. I already know Vacoma's machines because as you know, I have the MT1501. That's my single head. But I just upgraded because I needed more heads. And I have the new Marquee 2002 with the new 10S touchscreen panel. And I had the pleasure of having on-site live training. And it just so happens that I know this tech because I met him at Deco Summit two years ago. So I'm going to be breaking down or he's going to be breaking down everything that, you know, that you need to know in order to set your machine up things. So we'll just take you through a few things to set up. I won't give you the whole entire things, but I'll make sure that I record, you know, the key features. So I want to introduce to you Mr. Robert Walker, he is so great at what he does and he has like a whole entire business, but I'm gonna let him introduce himself. Welcome Mr. Robert Walker to my new craft space. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, first and foremost, I'm delighted to be here. Um, when they told me that it was Katrina, I was like, okay, just another person. I didn't know that I knew Katrina at this <laughs> point. It's like, it was amazing when I was like, that's the Katrina I know from Deco Summit. So, yeah, most definitely I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to definitely be working with her. And like she said, we're going to be showing you guys a lot of things that will uh, definitely go for moving forward when it comes to setting up this machine and getting you guys uh, ready and prepared for your new venture. Yeah, uh, so I'm excited. So we're going to go ahead and jump in. He's going to be here. Now, normally, typically, you would get a full two-day training for everyone, right? It is two days. Because I already know the machine, we're going to try to knock everything out in one day because we're very busy people. But we're going to make sure we hit on everything for you guys. So stay tuned. If you're interested in any type of multi-head, these are some things that you'll need to know. So let's get started. Let's go. I'm ready. first thing um so I didn't do anything this year the, the first thing is to get it out from the wall because yeah do you need to move everything from underneath no no, no 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 don't wait um, i just need to get enough room where i'm going to be in the back okay all right and start setting it up all right so the next thing is i'm going to put the wheels down just so it doesn't slide on this right now okay also oh, it doesn't move yeah that's all So this is just all we're doing is letting the, this tree up here. Mm -hmm. I guess you say I could have threaded the, the stuff for you. <laughs> uh, this is, it's, trust me, I do it so much. I do it so much. I tear these things down and I mean at my own place. So we're raising up. All right, and the only thing that you're doing is you're going to be tying in. Everything mm -hmm. just like you did on the 1501. Yep, just taking them in and yeah, adding simple the thread stuff. to it. Yep. So it comes already pre-threaded. So mm -hmm. now I'm, all I'm gonna do is we're just gonna add in the the thread and tie it and then pull the strings through. They make it easy for you for the setup. They do. So that way you don't have to do everything. But if you do the on um, the pre-training online, it does show you how to thread it from beginning to end. But because it comes pre-threaded, you don't have to do that unless you pull it too much or you, <laughs> and then you do have to do it. You really have to do it. Yep. And this this is probably, if it's not already threaded up, this will be one of your longest processes. Yes, if it's not already trust threaded. me, that's the one <laughs> thing you don't want to do in the beginning. No. So you want to take your time and make sure you learn how to, um, and we'll definitely show you that today. So this, the actual placement stoppers, which are here, mm -hmm. um, they actually come up and they're good for the large cones. Yeah. But for these smaller Small cones, ones. they'll fit right down. But here's one of the problems that usually when I go to 
do a setup, this is the way they'll have them. Yeah. So why this does not work? So as it unravels, it will fall down and the thread will go under here. So it's just trying to pull up. And it, I did that my very first time exactly. and I didn't know. So when you have the smaller thread, yep. you want to definitely take those off. Definitely want to take these off and just, and I mean, a lot of people will take them and either put them here or put them in a plastic storage bag. Yeah, um, my drawer, yep. yeah. So, so it's, you, you only keep them for the big ones. Exactly. That would be, that's ideal. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some people that will have their cones still sitting on top of these and they're very, very, and I'm going to be honest, they're very hard to get off. So of course I'll probably be switching some of the colors out, but because I don't have enough extra ones yet, we're just going to use the, the little small sample ones that they sent and we're going to set them up in that particular order because they only give you like basic colors to start out with. There's no right way to set these up. It's just in accordance to however your business is, mm -hmm. is set up. Yeah, you can use some. I've seen some people have machines where if they have a lot of different machines. They'll have one one color set up with just like pastel colors or neutral colors. You know, so you can set them up in any color order you want. Whatever you're embroidering, that will be your color scheme. Basically, so it's numbered from one, two, all the way to 20. Mm -hmm. Then, so I tie in the first one, and here's the second one here. I just trace the loops back here, pick up number two, which is black, unravel, mm -hmm. place it down, and then all I'm going to do is get that one, and I'm going to tie off. Yep. All right. And when you're tying off, all you're doing is basically just locking it in to place so that when you go to the front and pull through mm -hmm. they'll all come through and the first time when i was doing it i wasn't tying it i guess like securely i had to learn how to actually tie it because it would always unravel coming through so then mm -hmm. you had you know it's a certain knot that you have to do yep um so basically it's i think they like to refer to this as a slip knot is what it's, it's basically called mm -hmm. and all you're doing is just looking like a shoe and you just tie it off that's basically all you really need to do yep. you just have to make sure that there's a knot in there and you have to make sure that they're all in line when you tie them up meaning um so if it's one two three and four it has to make sure you have to make sure that that one two three and four it has free space so when you pull them through it'll just flow right on through yeah all right and again this is the hardest part of the setup right here because it's just uh takes a little bit of time messing with it yeah but it's so easy it something is. that you guys can do so once you learn this once you learn how to thread the machine the rest is a breeze so let's let's go here and pull pull a couple of them through just to see yep so now we'll show you what exactly he means so Here's a retention spring where, meaning, so all of your threads will actually fit in here for placement and for hold. Mm -hmm. So you unravel here because they're all looped together. All right. And so at the end of the day, they all hang down. All 20 colors are hang down. And when I say pull through, here's one. We're going to pull one. And sometimes you will get that break. And then as it moves through, you'll see it. It'll all be and now white. And you see it just change the colors. Yes. Yep. So now that's the new thread hang. coming through. So that one would be done. And the same thing. But number two, let's number take it from the top so that mm -hmm. you guys can see it coming through. And that's number two. Okay. Same thing with three. And if you really get fancy with it you can grab two mm. let's see pull a little slow so that way i can I'm trying okay to all right so right there he's pulling three and four at the same time once a color turns solid we're good yep same thing and then of course five is the last one that we have here tied in right now Because we are filming today, I normally would tie all 15 and pull them all at the same time. <laughs> really? I do. I try and pull them all at the same time. That's the thing. All, all right, right, so look, we can do that on the next one. You can do it. Show how fancy you are. Yeah. Yeah, it just saves a little bit of time. That's about it. Yeah, Rob is a pro. <laughs> I've been doing it a while. Good while. So, the big, one of the biggest deals. 
all right, is to make sure that this shipping plug comes out. The shipping plug? Yes, the out. shipping plug is Ooh. right here. And what it does is tie in the two uh, drive shafts or rods so that um, they don't shift or move during shipment. Okay. So at this point, the only thing that you're going to do is take an Allen key and you're going to loosen them up until you're able to basically twist this out. Okay, yeah, I didn't have that on the first one. Yeah. By this being a, a two head or a double. And I have to keep that. Yes, because if you're ever going to go into, let's just say uh, you're gonna move this machine into another shop, it's always a good idea okay. to put this back on there. In transit, it will not move. move. And so that's all it is, it's just all it's gonna do is just hold the rods together, lock them in one place. And eight is here. Okay, and now we see the threads moving. And the colors will change again. And that's good. So all of the ones that we've already tied off, in order to not make a mess, mm -hmm. we're going to cut. Make sure you get some good snips, and they do, they do have these in a the box. Yeah. Come on. Mm -hmm. Mine are bad. Uh, you saw my gear. Yeah. So you are so bad. <laughs> Differently. Like, these are different mm -hmm. than oh, compared to... Oh, yeah. Big time. Um, it has a, a nice, better tension adjustment. Okay, I like that. Yeah. While well, we're pulling so fast, guys, mm -hmm. I'm sorry to show you. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. And the color just changes. Right the there. color changes, and that's it. And again, all you can do is snip them. Okay, so now we're matching the colors from the first one to the second one. So whatever you put over here, you need to make sure you put them the same colors in the exact same place on the second head. And again, I'll be swapping these out. These are just the colors that Rakoma sent me. And I'll be adding my own colors to them with the bigger spools. But for now, we're just going to go with these. By us using the larger cones, I'm just going to do the same thing. But I am going to add yep. the placements back. And it's no special way to do it. And all it's going to do is, as the machine is actually working, there's no movement. Holding that's all. Place, yeah. yeah, that's all it does. This is how the larger cones will actually sit in there, just in case you wanted to see it. Yeah. And they're hard to get off. You got to go for When I was pumped, I was like, do these things come off? <laughs> yeah, sometimes you have to use you know, like the needle nose pliers to get them off and all. So, so now you're gonna take them off? Yeah. Wow. Some of them break. Yeah, I'm like, I hope none of them break. That's all right. Taking his time, he's pulling them all through. So the again, colors didn't change yet? Not yet. There you go. Wow. So everything but 17. So 17 was the one. Because I did have one pop. Yeah, that's 17. So the biggest deal with the threading part is no more than after you've pulled everything down and through. It's just making sure that you've got the thread behind the retention part and then a good so is on. it good to keep it behind that little retention part? It is. It is. Um, a lot of people don't uh, do it and they, they'll come down and go through the press of feet and, and they're not wrong by any means. I don't do it. I don't go down and through the press of feet because it doesn't help anything to be honest with you. And then the only thing you just let them hang. It's here. Press all the way to the back. It goes behind there. And the biggest thing is a clean snip. Yeah. You know, and then you can go back and snip them all later. I see you going up. Mm hmm Oh, so you don't put it through the hole? No. 
Really? No. There's no need. That's the first time I've ever seen that. There's no need. The presser feet are going to do it, their job, which is to press whatever the garment or the cap down, and that's pretty much the size of it. And again, my snips were bad, so. So does, does this help, that method, does it help at all with like less thread breaks? It does not. Um, the only thing that helps with thread breaks, and this is from me to you and all of your people, the only thing that's going to help with thread breaks is that your tension is correct. If your tension is incorrect, I promise you, um, you're going to have issues. If your digitizing is incorrect, because the machine only reads what's put in it, i.e. the digitized files. All right, so you have to make sure that those two things are right. And a lot of people don't even go behind the hook. I do. Mm -hmm. um, and But the, what happens as the thread's actually going down and the press of feet is pressing on the garment or the cap, it's pressing and it's actually grabbing the thread and throwing it away from the actual hook, which is at, you know, down at the hook timing part. So, and a little bit later on, as we move forward, we'll get into that. If you look right in there in the hook portion of it, I don't know how close you can get. So, and I just go to the side and then pull. So. Wow, so now I'm not gonna put it, because I always put it through the hole at the bottom, mm -mm. through the presser foot. Nope. Okay. The hook here is like, that's what keeps it out of the way, keeps it from looking like it's bouncing everywhere. Yeah. Go off to the side. Pull. Make it look so easy. I'll be like squinting and closing uh, one eye. <laughs> <laughs> now y'all yeah. see how big his fingers are, right? Uh, Anybody could do this. Yeah, definitely. I'm telling you. After you develop a rhythm, yeah. it's just flowing off of that rhythm is all it is. Wow. Make sure you get them all correctly put in because you don't want to have to keep doing this over and over and over. You certainly don't. No. Now I got three machines to worry about. Yeah. Three heads. So this hook here is where that string needs to be literally mm -hmm. behind there. And you just press it and once it's behind there, it's behind there. Mm -hmm. Like butter. Yeah, it's really easy. It's not that hard. The ones that are just too long, and you don't need all of that going into the garment. Hanging in the way. Yep. So just sniffing and cleaning off all the loose ends now. I definitely would have been still threaded. <laughs> <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to change off of this mm -hmm. to a black garment. And all the tools, they actually come with everything that you're basically going to need to work on this machine. It comes in the bundle mm -hmm. as it does all of them. This piece here. And the easiest way, to be honest with you, um, the way I like to do it is at this point, I would just turn the machine off. Oh, okay. You turn it off? Yeah. Once a servo, you hear it. It stops. And then I'll just make it easy on myself. Oh, but, yeah. okay. Yeah, you have to turn it off because you can't move the arm while it's in place. Wow. So I've never, I never did that. Yeah, if you, um, the hard way is to, and so at that point, that's it. You loosen those two screws, turn this back to the middle, and pull it out. Why it coming in with all the tips and tricks? <laughs> Cause you know when you when you have it on when you take you know you move it back and forth I guess you know the gears it goes from side to side. Exactly. And we'll get into this here in a second. We'll put that right there. For me. Same deal. Just pull it to an open space where you're comfortable and you can get your, your screwdriver in here or your L-shaped screwdriver. And you're just gonna loosen it. Is all you're gonna do. No big deal. Doesn't hurt anything as long as the power's off. Mm-hmm. And once you loosen it, again, come back to the middle. There. And just, just slide it out. All right. 
Now. Yeah, I'm geeking out because I just learned something new. <laughs> I really like learning new tips and tricks that's gonna make the job easier. So I know a lot about these machines, but it's always good to have one of the best coming here and showing you some things that you've never knew before. All right, so we can do it the hard way or we can do it the easy way. So the easy way. Recoma actually has identification marks that are actually on this uh, traverse arm here, all right? But what I do to make it easy, all right, I just do this. Yeah, oh yeah, I do that too. So and then I'll put them up. But I'm a magnetic hoop girl, so yeah. I don't even use these no more. But for purposes of people just getting the machine, we're going to be using these today. Most definitely. All right. So, and at this, this point right here, only thing I'm going to do is just turn the power back on. It's going to orientate itself. Look at the little smoke on the Ricola oh, yeah. panel. Come on, Ricola. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Trying to be fancy. Yeah, this is, this is a definitely a plus right here. This, this touch panel is a plus. All right, so right now, we're literally set up on still the cab driver. Mm -hmm. All right, so what has to happen is we're going to have to select a design that's going to fit within that hoop. All right, so I'm going to go to USB and have folders and this is again here's another good feature touch screen definitely so right now i'm looking for a training folder which is right here training files okay. it opens up and here's a good thing that i like about this new fix so if you click on it and then you select it and then move to machine or save to machine so you can't preview it under the like you like you know oh it's at the top it's at the top right oh, okay. here. here's see, a new feature that they added okay it's like um you literally can see and you can see how many actual colors are in that design mm -hmm. all right so here's another one so one color two colors three colors four colors you can see mm -hmm. it and it also gives you a stitch count it also gives you a um, number of colors that are actually in that machine select it save to machine and then hit save Okay. If the actual design that I have up there will not fit, like see, it shows incompatible size, a great feature. All right, so those are basically X'd out. Mm -hmm. So if I try to click on it, it tells me incompatible hoop size. Okay, love that. Yep. Now it highlights the ones that it will work within. Got it, love that. I'm gonna change this one to C. Okay. Select hoop. Yes. Oh, that makes it so much easier now. And now it's readjusting. Yep. It's so going back to the home position. And it also flips the design itself back to the upright position. Got it. So that right there is a plus. Okay. Okay. So me, this is probably going to be really, really hard for you to see. And I'll show you what I do as a reference point. Mm -hmm. All right. When we get a little bit deeper into this. Okay, so there's tabs back here. So, me, I, I would fit those into the already pre-slotted tabs and they have marks on them, like indented into it. But just in case you forget, here's my reference. Center. I know I'm in the center of this hoop. Mm -hmm. This is 110% in the right position. Because I'm in the center here, the tabs are alongside here where I can easily fit this uh, in and out. The only thing that you would have to do if you're using magnetic, you would literally have to put the magnetic up here in order to begin the same exact process. Mm -hmm. Okay, then at this point right here, we're gonna tighten it up. We're well, gonna tighten it up, that's it. So once it, it gets snug, that's it. Yep. Don't wanna you don't wanna over tighten them because you can strip them out. And then it becomes useless because you have to get somebody or you have to uh, re-thread them. And that's a good little process. So you don't ever like whenever I'm tightening, I always like move the needle over so that way I can have better access. No. You don't have to. So it, there's an, enough room in the back here. And if you really wanted to um, get crazy with it, you can go to Amazon and get 
um, 10 millimeter thumb screws. Oh, which look, is, yeah, I have this. I don't ever use those. I use this to tighten. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> there's another little, it, it's literally called uh, thumb screws. Mm. So you get the thumb screws, and at this point right here, that's it. Yep. So the biggest thing is um, when it comes to the hooping, so right now we're just going to be using literally uh, backing is all we're going to use. So we use a three ounce backing and I use this because it's really super stable. Usually what I like to do is have uh, six ounces. All mm -hmm. right. So I always refer to it, whatever the garment is, three ounces. And then I would have one three ounce sheet under, which reduces all types of issues that you may literally run into. So I will put it down. So by being backing, there's no you can do it any way you want to, mm -hmm. all right? But I usually like to have the thumb screws, you know, to me, i.e., thumb screws to me. If it's making that sound and everything's okay, I'm making sure that it's all nice and flat, all right? Okay. So right now what we're gonna do is I'm simply, we're gonna make it simple. We're gonna put the bobbins in. These right here are just um, lubrication sponges that they put in the machine to keep it lubricated as they are transporting it. Not a big deal. All right, so, so close the garage door so you can see better. And here's the the actual bobbins themselves. I mean the bobbin casing. Bobbin cases. Mm -hmm. All right, and this is real simple. Mm -hmm. There's no two rules to this. It's only a one-way type deal. So. When I'm inserting the bobbins, the first thing that I'm gonna make sure is that the bobbin itself is going to my right. Mm -hmm. All right, there's a slit within the bobbin case. I make sure that it's pointing up. This is just me. There's many ways to do it. And then the, the next thing is I'm putting the bobbin in. I'm pressing against it, holding it so it does not rotate on me. Slide through the slit, mm -hmm. slide under. Then I'll go work my way back to the pigtail. Wrap the pigtail once. That's it. If I am correct, the letters will flow to my right wow. when I pull the string. Yep. That one is good. So you only wrap the pigtail once? Yeah, there's no need. I've been wrapping it twice. It doesn't. The pigtail, you wrapping it twice has no significance because once it makes its first cut, it's out of the pigtail anyway. Does not matter. Only thing you're gonna see is it's gonna look like it's just hanging, and you'll see in a little bit. So as it's going in, there's only one correct way to, for this thing to fit. There's an insert right here, okay? It has to go in that way. It can't go in any, any other way. And you should hear a click. Yeah. It's in securely. Then over top of the picket. Oh, make sure it's over. Yes. Okay, so let's get a close-up of that mm -hmm. so that way you guys can see. Okay. okay, so basically when it comes to after we got all the bobbin and everything is set up, the next move is I individualize, go through each and every color. So if it's 15 needles, it's 15 colors. 20 needles, 20 colors. I go through one, two, and three, four, five, all the way down the line, and that's how I set them. But there's one thing that I do do that most people don't do, and I do not readjust tension on a regular basis. I know... Most people say, well, my tension is not right. I got tension gauge and all that. I get it. I get it. Here's the way. All right. So the first thing, there's a screw here that this knob rides on, right? Your orientation point should be the silver and the gray needs to be flush. It should not be coming too far out. It should not be sunk too far in. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to set every one of those just like that. Oh, so it should be so every like, gray. So like no. this one is in too much. Too much. Wow. Okay. My my orientation spot is my start preference. And I know I'm not wrong. It's going to be flushed every single time. If it's coming out, it's wrong. If it's too far in, it's wrong. No matter what anybody tells you, no matter what you read on that tension gauge, it's wrong. Mm -hmm. All right. And you're going to see. All right, so so let me see how it feels. Mm -hmm. Make sure so I can feel like a little bit yep. of the silver, and that's it. Okay, that's as much as so you want to feel. Too far in should be flush. Right, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a for instance. Here, here's a for instance. That's too far. Mm -hmm. What you've done is take pressure off of the thread. You've taken pressure 
off of the thread. So by it being like this, it's flowing through really super loosely. Okay. So what does it do? It affects the overall outcome of the design itself. Gotcha. All right. So what this does, now you have too much pressure on the thread. Got it. As it's flowing through on a consistent basis, the threads are supposed to look like this. But if it's looking like this, normally what happens, breaks because you have too much pressure on it. This is the neutral spot. And if you own a Recoma machine, this is where you wanna start with every one of them. So I go through and set up and I flush all of them out. And do they, they send the machines like this on purpose so that way you can make sure all of them are correct? Cause no. they're all different. They are, but here's the thing. This is what, what happens in my opinion. When they come from the factory, they're only doing it in accordance to whether or not the design stitched out correctly. If did it make it through successfully? Hmm. That's my take on it. My fix on it is I want this to stitch the same every single day. Okay. All right. And not lot, just for one design. No. Now I'm going to be able to d to decipher whether it's the tension that's wrong. Or is it the machine that's wrong? Or is it the design? Yeah. Usually, it's gonna be your design. Designing is 100% your biggest issue. So all I'm doing again is I'm just flushing every one of these out. Now, the next question for some people is gonna be, so how often do you have to do this? Mm -hmm. I done my, I got my first Recoma five years ago. I've never adjusted it. Wow. Never. And that's not fictitious at all. And there's people that will verify that I have taught them the same thing and they've never had to touch those. Usually, and I definitely want to speak of this. So each color is as we're speaking, it's its own entity. All right. Each one of these knobs controls it, that one color. So one is one all the way down to one. Mm -hmm. Two is two all the way down to two. Okay, but the bobbin is in control of every Everyone. one of those colors. Exactly. So that's something that we all need to be made aware of is that this one controls everyone. So if you're not having, and what does that translate into? It translates into if you're having issues with color number one, all right, the first thing that you're going to look at is the color. You're going to check from here through the thread path is correct good am i having the same issue with 20 no then the only common denominator is going to be this right mm -hmm. it's going to be your bobbin instead of fumbling and going through and making adjustments on your knobs that you probably don't have to check the bobbin first something is wrong it could be too loose there could be build up under this sleeve right best way to get to it right here after a while the sheen and the dust from this color is going to build up under here so what it's going to do is make this rise up what does that ultimately do take pressure off the thread so it slides through now that it breaks easier the design doesn't look nearly as good mm -hmm. and you're going to know right off the top but i Going back to tension, do not just start adjusting tension just because something didn't go right. And that's literally what I would do in the very beginning. I was literally like having so many issues and I couldn't figure it out. But that's me not knowing my machine in the very beginning. And, and that's literally how it is. I mean, again, this doesn't change. This does not change. Think about it. The only thing that's feeding through the system, i.e. that individual color, is going to be the thread. What's is the one objective that could happen with feeding through. I'm gonna tell you, it's the buildup of dust under here, behind here, here, and here. Mm -hmm. That's it. If you don't hit anything, if you don't move anything, the machine's gonna function the identical same way as long as nothing changes. So this again is our initial starting point. Okay, so now they're all flush. So that way yes. you guys can see a close up 
that all of them are flush. Wow, never, never knew that. Never knew that. And you're gonna see when it stitches out. So again, and we're only gonna work with one head at a time mm -hmm. because if there's any issues, we're gonna correct that before moving forward. Okay, yep. here is, we don't need this head because we're not working on it. Turn that one off. All right, we'll turn that one off and we're gonna put this in. We know that it's right. All right, the first one I'll let just trace and I'm not gonna pull down the press loop. Now, I do it again, but this time I'm pulling down the presser foot to make sure that I am not hitting anything. Mm -hmm. So the trace area, because you know when you have it over here, mm -hmm. the first one is, because it doesn't say it, it's just the symbols on the other machines. It does. It's the broad area, but the yes. second one, I guess the other heart one is the more accurate. So the trace area, so the trace design on this one is the more accurate one. Exactly, 100%. Okay. Got it's it. going to literally go around every outside curve and it's going to let you know if it's in the right area or not okay so at this point right here we've chosen the colors we've done the trace everything is in the right parameters and we're going to hold with this one So we changed the color just because the white was stitching out. So we're just switching the color, finishing the design off. So changing the color, changing the speed. If your tension is right, nothing is going to be affected. All you're doing every single day is stitch, stitch, stitch. There's no making changes. Okay, we got a little jingle. <laughs> I don't know if y'all caught that, but it made a little jingle noise when it was done. It does, and the only thing left to do is to check the quality of it. That looks good. So we changed the colors a few times, so that's why it looks like that, but yeah. still. There's no four. Hold on, baby. I'm coming. So mm -hmm. perfect stitch out. Perfect. Oh, and look at the back. All right. So one of the bigger things that I definitely want to tell everybody is so when you get into this um, tension gauge and all of that stuff, the tension gauge only represents the satin stitch. It does not represent the fill stitch. So you can't see that line yeah. from here to here. It only represents a satin. That's it. So yeah, so we're gonna make those same adjustments. Okay. All right. So now we're doing head two. Yeah. And you don't have to be spot on with these. You just have to, it cannot, it cannot be this. Like the, he already said, this machine is horrible, guys. <laughs> so, oh my goodness. Yeah. So yeah. We'll get it right. It's a, it's a small fix. Like I said, it's only one or two things that you're looking for. And this is the major, this is so major in this industry, it's so major. And if you take a look at all of these, look at how, how yeah, they're all high. Okay, yeah. yeah look okay, at these. So this is correct. Now go back over here. Mm -hmm. They're all wrong. Oh, Lord. Oh, yeah. my, so these are different, but they're oh, yeah. still... They're still the same process. Okay. They're still the same process. And you definitely 110% do not want to be making adjustments to these. Check the other, check the ladder, which is going to be the, the bobbin. bobbin. Okay. Don't be checking and, and twisting these because this is going to throw you off because this one has a new tension set right here. Mm -hmm. If you notice here, it has a screw right here, the civil piece. So you can angle and move that left or right. Mm -hmm. So you can get more or less. All right. Usually when we make this adjustment, we won't have to do anything with those right there. It'll be very, it'll be very iffy if we have, have to make any type of adjustments. 
So just to show you guys the difference between the new tension gauges, this is what the new one looks like. It even had like, what's the spring? Is this what you were referring yes, to? that is it. Okay. So now these are the old ones. Complete mm -hmm. difference. Mm -hmm. Complete difference. And if you're going to purchase a, ma a machine from Macoma, this is what you want to get. The marquee. Mm -hmm. If you're going to make a purchase from yeah. Macoma. And they have the new, you don't have to have a 20 needle. It doesn't no. come in a 15 needle, but it, it does, does come in a 10 needle. Mm -hmm. So you can get the new EM1010, um, the marquee one, or you can get the 20 needle. Yeah. More is always better when it comes to this business because less changes. Yep. Less changes. Mm -hmm. So we're only going to work with this head here. Okay, so we're going to cut that one off. That one's going off. Oh, no. so you can run either head. Yes. Okay, so I was always thinking if you're only just running one, you would have to use head one. But not true, because if something no, no, no. is wrong with that one... Then you're going to use this one. It keeps you um, in the moment. It keeps you um, running jobs. So at the end of the day, okay, you can cool. use either or. This sounds so much smoother and quieter than my other <laughs> machine. <laughs> so here, needle one. All right. I'm going to trace it. it. It gets close, it's not going to hit. That's all. If you feel uncomfortable at any point in time, you can always use your directional arrows to move away yeah. from that side. And here's another cool feature. You see right here? Mm -hmm. That moves slower. Yeah. That moves faster, a lot faster. So for giggles, we're going to just keep it slow. All right, so we're ready to go. That's it. So, <laughs> I gotta get used to that noise. Yeah, you actually can go in and program your own like n noise. Oh, whatever. really? Oh, we yeah. will be doing that. Yeah. So, like, whatever. Yeah, music or whatever. So, anyway, so as far as answering the part about the changing, I wouldn't change this because if you look at the stitch out, it looks perfect, and it's it's so simple. Kind of don't make large changes for small issues so and that's as simple as it gets so you get a lighter and you just burn that off so we're done with flats now we're about to switch back to caps and show you guys how easy it is to do caps i don't like caps well i don't like <laughs> switching back and forth and of course flats are my favorite and he was just telling me it's so much easier to get um to switch over to like the thumb screw so that's something else i'm gonna be getting now I've seen them at Deco Summit, um, and I've seen Joe from Heart and Hustle. I know he uses them, and it makes life so much easier when swipping out, or switching out the the, um, the flats, going from flats to caps. It does. So I'm pretty sure some of you might know about it, but I'll have it linked down below in the description box, just in case if you don't know what I'm talking about, so that way you can take a look at it and see if it'll be beneficial to you. And so, and since Robert is saying it is, it is. <laughs> I'm telling you, it is. You are gonna love them. So I'm gonna stop the video here. I'm gonna break this up into two parts. I don't want to hold you too long. So we dived into tension. We did the threading. But please come back for part two because we're gonna be going into hat. And of course, we're gonna touch on my old machine, the MT1501, and show you some things. There's a lot more tips and tricks. So for anyone who's just starting their embroidery journey, I hope this helped you out. Even if you're not just starting, I hope you learned something new. Don't forget to like and subscribe, share this video, and comment down below if you learned anything new. And I will see you guys in in part two. Thanks for watching.